Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Chensky CX-949 homage to a Hublot Big Bang. So let's start with the wrist check. I'm wearing a Liege 8989, and Grogu is wearing my Seastern Sub 600T. Grogu said that the Jedi Academy was having a talent contest, and Grogu asked Ben if he wanted to team up. Ben said, no thank you, he's strictly a solo act. Alright, let's take a look at the watch. It did not come in a box. It came with these instructions and this hang tag. So, here it is. This Chensky is an homage to a Hublot Big Bang, which starts at $12,900. Hublot reminds me of the movie Max, where John Cusick played an art dealer in post-World War I Germany. He was asked why his paintings were so expensive, and his reply was, otherwise no one would buy them. In other words, the main appeal of Hublot is that they are ridiculously expensive and thus hated by many in the watch world as an overt symbol of opulence with no substance. I am not a Hublot hater, although I would never buy one even if I could afford one. If owning a Hublot makes you happy, then by all means buy it. A watch is worth what people are willing to pay for it. Due to the mass hatred of Hublot, you don't see many homages. I saw this Chensky and thought it was about time I had a Hublot homage on my channel. And I probably won't get any comments about how the watches I review are not really homages since those types won't defend Hublot. This Chensky is only around $15, so it is anything but opulent. Nobody is going to confuse it for a real Hublot except for maybe at a distance. But it is still a fun watch for the money. Yes, it is a small second chronograph with no sub-seconds, but it doesn't have a tachymeter to remind you how useless it is. I enjoyed my time wearing this watch, which is the most important thing. The watch is 42 millimeters at the bezel, but 47.5 millimeters if you count these little rings here in the crown guard. It's 52.4 millimeters lug to lug. 14 millimeters thick and the lug width does not apply because it has an integrated strap but it's 25.7 millimeters at the widest and it weighs 112 grams on the supplied silicone strap and this being a Hublot we have a bezel with coarse vertical brushing similar to other more famous watches and then we have these little screws. I'm pretty sure they're decorative only. I have not tried to unscrew them. And I'm sure if I did, I would probably lose them. Then we have the dial. The dial has the Chensky name up top. And if you look at the dial too, we have some fake gears because this is not an automatic watch. This is a quartz watch. So yeah, those gears there, they're just decorative. And an automatic chronograph would cost a lot more than $15, that's for sure. Then we have uh, the date wheel is right here. And there's like little windows to see parts of the date wheel moving. But here's where the, you see the actual date here and it's round. Then we have baton indices at the odds, and then we have numbers at the evens. And uh, both the indices and the numbers are loomed. Then we have fence post, minute and hour hand. And then we have a thin, thin second hand with no loom. And then this is a small second chronograph. So basically, uh, on the right here, we have a 24-hour indicator. On the left is the chronograph minute counter. And so this does not do sub-seconds. To use the chronograph, of course, just push the top pusher, starts the second hand ticking. Once again, there are no sub-seconds, so you just, once a second is all you get. Stop it. Reset it. Then the crown is a push-pull. You only get your basic 30 meters water resistance. So no need for a screw-down crown or screw-down pushers. 
The crown action is fairly loose and setting the watch is a chore because of it. But it does have the saving grace is that as long as you hold the crown in place when you push it in, you can push it in without it jumping. But if you don't hold it and just press it, it's more than likely going to jump on you. Then the crystal is just a flat mineral glass. It barely sticks up above the bezel just a little bit. And then we have the case. As you can see, the case is, uh, it's not just one piece. It's, uh, we got a center here. Then we got the tops and the bottoms. And of course, this is not stainless steel. It's a chrome plated alloy top and bottom. Then a uh, coated middle. And I'm sure that this actually comes apart if you unscrew it. But I'm not going to try that. Then also it looks like the strap is screwed in too. The case back is just to press on because you only get 30 meters water resistance. Which is the default if it just says water resistant. Then it says stainless steel back which is another tell that the rest of the watch is not. And then it gives the model number CX949. Underneath the watch is a movement of unknown origin. I'm assuming it's Chinese because if it was Japanese they'd advertise it. And this is one of those chronograph ones where they have a... It's not really a moon phase. It's just an AM PM indicator. You got the moon at night and the sun during the day. And that's just not how the real moon works. Because sometimes you get the moon during the day. The strap, it says it's silicone, and so I guess I believe them, but man, it feels more like resin. It's not all slick and squishy like silicone. So I would just wonder if they're, they just made the mistake because they just don't know any better. Because, yeah, it, it feels better than silicone. I really do like this strap. And then it comes with a deployment clasp, and it's... Not the nicest clasp, but it's better than no clasp. I'd rather have a clasp, that, this clasp, than a buckle. And of course, you can adjust it easy enough. Just pull this up, and then you can switch holes. And it looks here, I got uh, three notches left. So you should be able to wear this if you have at least eight and a quarter. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. I think it looks nice. I mean, yeah, once again, if your goal is to look like a hublot, it looks like a hublot. And there's the wrist roll. Here we are in the loom room. Usually a $15 watch will only have loomed hands, but this one has loomed indices and numbers. Let's see if it is at least decent. As we speed up the time, everything fades really fast. This is not even so so loom. At least the hands outshine the indices. What do I like about this watch? Well, it looks and wears nice. And I like this silicone strap because I don't even think it's silicone. Feels more like resin. And I like the fact that the strap comes with a clasp. What are my grapes and groans? Loose crown action makes setting difficult. Lousy loom that fades almost instantly. And I really don't like fake gears on the dial. I wish they would have just left them off. Do I recommend this watch? Sure, it's only $15 and it does look a lot like a Hublot. However, if you're one of those Hublot haters, this watch probably won't win you over. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Chensky CX-949 and I will be back with another review or unboxing. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.